you and I have spoken a lot in the last year since we've known each other. Um, I've uh, interviewed you for this uh, book that's going to be coming out. In that, I, yeah. I asked you questions like, um, what's going on in AI governance, safety, and uh, AI capabilities? And you had mentioned that there's essentially two overarching approaches in dealing with AI governance. And the first approach is to break down efforts into three categories, legislation, institutions, and levers. Do you want to expand a bit on what you what you mean by that? Yeah. So um, where to start? Okay. So when we think about governance, I think about it as like a, a, a variety of processes, not just legislation, as you say. Um, and I think at different places in this process, we have different tools. So one, as you mentioned, is legislation, which in the AI governance world, we've gone from basically no moving uh, legislation globally five years ago, or very little, or maybe a little bit going on in the EU five years ago, to, I saw a recent report, it's, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens across just the United States state legislature as proposals. Um, so there's a lot of active conversation now about what how we should regulate through legislation, AI capabilities and AI tools. All right. So this is like one major approach the EU has passed uh, the EU AI Act, which uh, takes kind of a, a broad general approach uh, to thinking about AI legislation. Other, other countries have taken different approaches. Our AI governance team led by Derek Chang uh, and with some work from Elliot McKernan has looked at this to compare the approaches from the EU versus China and the US. The U.S. has uh, is now seems like moving towards possibly some legislative efforts, but has been taking more of an institutional approach um, or an executive branch approach. And um, the U.S. government released an executive order out of the Biden administration's White House office. I'm going to forget the date now, but maybe it's been six months ago mm -hmm. that really took a whole of government approach. And they really were interested in. How do we make use of innovations from AI? Uh, how do we empower government to do better, better administration, help us be uh, more innovative, more secure, more safe, um, and how we protect against some of these more extreme risks that you and I and our, our team at Convergence has been focused on. So, and then the third one, uh, what was the third one? The levers? Is, Is it the levers? Oh, the levers, yeah, yeah. yeah. So levers, um, are kind of a broader catch-all for different things that we might build and different things that we might do. So for example, there's a lot of talk in the AI governance space about creating international institutions mm. to try to uh, have common agreement, common norms about what we should do uh, with AI globally. Another example is treaties or international treaties. I signed a letter, for example, um, that argues that we should have an international treaty on AI use and that we should have the major powers at the table talking about these things because um, of the immense power and capabilities that might come from near-term AI. So these are like, these are some examples. Uh, the, uh, the other type of levers you can think about are uh, coming from the industry itself and, and creating incentives to either steer the direction of capabilities or for the industry to have common norms and procedures for dealing with risk, for mm. dealing with how they share their models, yeah. um, those types of things. There's a bunch of different tools within those uh, kind of lever category. Mm -hmm.